Good morning, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from beautiful Morocco by Guyana. Today it's a wet day. We're starting off really bright and early, seven in the morning, and we're going to be making some traditional breakfast. And what is that? It's bake and salt fish. We're also going to pair with some tapioca. Then after that, we're going to explore the grounds, and we're going to have a bush cook. So that's like lunch. So breakfast and lunch back to back. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody good? Yeah. And over here we have the dough for the bake. Yes, that's right. You boil out the fish. So what fish is this? This is bangamiri, and then you strip it from the bone. Got it. So there's no bones in the no. in the fish. But you wash it right with the lime. The next step for this now, you have to put it in the pot, and then you fry it up with your tomatoes, with your carrots. So you do like a blend. Is this yeah. a choka? It's like a choka. Like a choka, yeah. Like a choka. Yeah. But you're frying it. Okay, so it's like a choka, you're frying it. So a choka is basically like a blend, right? Yes. Correct. And over here we have other ingredients. Garlic, this is the onion, this is the celery, this is the um, shallot. And then I'm preparing tapioca porridge. So now this is what's going in the, the pot to boil. This is the tapioca. Oh. This make out of cassava starch that was grated yesterday. So this is another byproduct from the cassava. Yes, this right? is another byproduct from the cassava. And this is the fever grass tea. It boils in there. This is for fever. If you have fever, you can drink it, and you can if you have a small child, a baby, and this fever is not going, you can boil it and bathe the child with it, put it for cold, and it helps take away the fever. So like a natural medicine. It's a medicine. The capadola. Capadola? Yes. So what's the capadola? From a tree root. From a tree root? Yes. So that's the lemongrass? Yeah. So do I eat it or just smell it? Yeah. Wow. Right here? Yeah, it smells like lemon. It's amazing. We had some of this uh, lemongrass tea yesterday. It was absolutely phenomenal and it's a natural medicine, right? Tomatoes in the pan. Mm. Onion. Tomato, onion, garlic. And then we got some salad, so some green onion. Okay. Now we're adding the fish. This is the beef that's going in this pan. That is the tasso beef. Tasso? Yeah. The dry beef, the salt of dry beef. A tasso, tasso. Tasso with some decoration, the sweet pepper, you put it in, into the corn. Black pepper, for, for flavor the pot. Mm-hmm. Ingredients. So what was that, some salt? Mm -hmm. That is a crab, some salt. You add some chicken salt. The cubes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just keep moving it, right? Yeah, oh. Fry this until it's golden. Yeah. Almost like a stir fry of fish. This carrot into the tasso, carrot going in, in, into any dishes you cook. You also throw carrot? Yeah, carrots, one of my favorite veggies, so I accept it. <laughs> you can taste. We're gonna taste? Yeah, if it wants salt, if it wants anything else, you can taste. I guess I'll just try a little piece right here. Mmm. <gasps> oh, oh. oh, not too salty. Mmm, I love the fish. Very buttery. It wants more salt. It's okay. oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. So the tapioca is almost done. Only 15 minutes. Yeah, it's okay. Then now we're going to process to the um, bake. So we're almost done with the salt fish. Next comes the bakes. So how do we cook the bake? We fry in the bake. So we're frying so the bake. add oil in the pan. really flattening it, huh? So now the salt fish is done, it's ready to eat. Now we have to make the bake, so we're gonna fry it right here on this pan. So this is gonna pop up really nicely. It reminds me of like a puri in India. Oh, well, that's quick, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, it swells. You see, that is why they have it floats. Yeah. It's flowing now, yeah. 
put another one in the farm. Okay, so this one's ready, right? This one's ready to eat. Okay. Take the fork and you juke it a little before. And you hold it over the farm so the oil can get to drain. You, you, you prepare your, your basin and you put it inside here. And that's ready. It's, it's my <laughs> turn to roll it out, right? So Rolling out the bake. So. Oh, I think we need more flour, right? Yes. Yep, flip it. It's nice. It's really soothing. Doing this, looking out, seeing the rain. That rain kept me in bed today. I slept at nine hours last night, guys. Well, I haven't really slept in years, so nine hours for me was like recovery. Uh, right here. Think it's good? I try my best. And that's it, breakfast is done. Now we're gonna go right under our big house. And that's where we're having breakfast. We have some lovely, fiery, weary peppers. Your favorite, I believe. It's all for me? Yes. You remember yesterday when you were dunking these? So we thought what best than to put some of these on the table for you. Which is hotter, orange or red? Ah, I think it's the red ones. Well, she's saying red, let's go red. That's really hot. Mm. But nice. Mm. Good burst. Mm. Lots of seeds. That's where the spice is. Mm -hmm. mm. And everything here has weary? No. The peppers you should kept separate in some cases because you know some people may not be able to take the heat of it. Mm -hmm. But most Guyanese will tell you that the meal is incomplete without some pepper. And it can be in this form, it can be grinded. In the Rupununi they do a dry version. So there's so many parts of it, but Guyanese love pepper. Pepper. Yes. So what's the name of the, the vine here that I'm trying? Capadula in general is the vine. Or just say so capadula. Capadula. Just capadula. Say capadula. The capadula. Yeah. So this is the vine. Mmm, it's good. So this is really good for health, right? You usually use the capadula as a medicinal, for a medicinal purpose rather. Um, it helps it when you have back aches. Um, you could strain a muscle in your back. It, it helps with that. It depends how you want to do it. Usually, <clears throat> what we do, we kind of open the bake, uh -huh. and then we put the sawfish inside in the middle as a filling. And then, sandwich. take a nice bite. Yes. So you gotta do it like this, right? Yeah, but yeah, don't separate it all the way. No, 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 no. And the top. Oh, they're talking about this. Yeah, yeah. You open a hole, right? Nice. Pocket. You to see one that's so Okay, so you're making a sandwich. Yes. So bring it up like that. Yeah. That's good. This is a different pepper. This is a pepper sauce. So generally what we would do, we would put the bake, the sawfish in the bake and then take some droplets of the pepper onto the sawfish. And that puts the pepper e effect into it. So I'm gonna stuff it, right? Okay, here we go. Bacon sawfish. Mmm. -hmm. Fluffy. A little flaky. Mmm. Very light on oil. I love the inside. So it's a mix of fish, got some different um, vegetables in there, you got some onion, forgot what else, carrot she threw in there, right? Yeah. Shallows. Mmm. So I'm having mine a little bit different, so I'm not gonna put it, put mine as a filling. I like to break my bread, <laughs> so to speak. And dive in. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Gotta get some pepper. The yeah. hard ones. Yeah. Is that spicy? I haven't tasted this this pepper sauce yet, so not sure the heat level. Perfect. Not too hot. Beautiful flavor. Love it. So as Stacy was talking, I was busy applying my pepper too. So I'm gonna take my first bite. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Really good bake. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is a traditional Chinese oh. breakfast. This is traditional. Yes. Yeah. Bacon saltfish. This is the most traditional, right? Yes. I mean, this is like number one. Let's try. So just like this, right? Uh, you, can, you can open it. I believe this. You think it has more heat? I'll be the judge of that. Mm -hmm. There's heat here, but with the combination, this doesn't hit you that bad, right? I love the bake. So fluffy. Mmm. 
and the salt fish is not too salty. Exactly. So enjoyable. Get it just right, not too salty, and you fry it up nice and with all the flavorings. Mm -hmm. This here could actually work as a dessert or as a snack as well. The avocado or pear, as we locally know it as. We call it pear. Yeah, we call it pear, and it goes with the cassava mostly. So to add a little flavor to the pear, you can also sprinkle a little salt on it to get it, just bring up the flavor a little. Here's how we eat it with the pear. So we scoop, take the cassava mm -hmm. as it's stiff and we scoop, okay. have the combination. Mm. What a great combination. In America, we have something called avocado toast. This is avocado cassava toast. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you just spread, right? Yeah. You make it a spread. Almost like guacamole, right? You take it out, you make it like... Mm -hmm. I still personally like the soft cassava. Mm. So just in case you're using the soft cassava, you won't be able to scoop the You won't be able to soup. I know. So you're, then you definitely have to use the soup. I, I guess yeah. the softer one is better for uh, soaking up any of the... Yeah, but, but in case you... It could go with the avocado as well. Mm -hmm. But you need the spoon to just scoop the avocado and get it on there. So this is tapioca porridge. This is made as another from another byproduct of the cassava, the bitter cassava that we would have processed yesterday. It's very popular in the Rupununi. So you take the grains and you turn it into porridge. Fun fact about the Rupununi, they make nearly everything into a porridge. Yeah, there's yam, there's pumpkin, um, there's mango, and the list goes on. Everything but this, you have this for breakfast. You can add sugar, you can add milk. And in your case, we won't be adding any milk. Tapioca porridge. Oh, yes. Mmm. So it's a little sweet. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, it, it, it almost feels like a jelly, this one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because it's pearls. It's tapioca pearls. Tapioca pearls. You okay? So if you have bubble tea, this is like the smaller version, right? It's tiny, tiny pearls. Mm. I have to end this drink. It's definitely filling. We cannot leave. The rest of the salt fish. Stacy, you want or you good? No, I'm good. You good? Yeah. I'm gonna stack mine. This is a big boy bacon salt fish. Like that. Huh? Mm. How beautiful this is. Mm -hmm. So bacon salt fish, we can find it everywhere in the country, right? Pretty much, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for me, this reminds me the most of a puri in India. The, wow. It's almost the same. There's a little crispier, mm -hmm. less doughy. Mm -hmm. But the same process. They put it into the fire, I mean, the oil, mm -hmm. you know, on a big pan. Usually it's a huge pan, uh -huh. like a hundred uh -huh. of them, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. That big will fill you up, though. So once we're done with breakfast, we have some lemongrass to wash all down. This is lemongrass tea. This is phenomenal. Super good. It's medicinal. It's really good for your health, right? Mmm, so good. It's amazing there's no actual lemon in this. It's just pure grass. And next to us, we have dessert. Nice, fresh pineapple. Mmm! Whoa. Guyana has the best pineapples. Let me tell you, hands down, right? I think so. This is a fact. Best pineapples in the world, Guyana. And this is everybody I've spoken to, especially uh, in areas like this where it's grown organically and in the Pomeroon. Best, best Lake Mainstay. Best pineapples ever. Mm -hmm. Juicy. So juicy. So much moisture. Wow. And it's like vibrating. The variety of pineapple that is here presently that you're eating is the cheese pineapple. Other species, like the indigenous people, they would classify them differently as. Tiger head, patwa pine. Just uh, the way it looks, right? Bush cow head. They have their traditional name. Now that we're done with breakfast, we're gonna go on a mini hike to see if we can see some birds, maybe some monkeys, hopefully some reptiles. We'll see, right? It's always hit or miss with wildlife. They have a nice trail over here to the right. So we're gonna go down. It's gonna be like a half hour walk. We'll come back, relax for a little bit more, and then we're gonna have a bush cook. We're gonna make one more dish for lunch. All right? The, the camp. It was originally designed as was used yesterday to do cassava processing. This trail is developed as earlier as we mentioned, the makeshift camp or the bush camp as 
some would say it was developed to do cassava or made to do cassava processing there we made a trail it's just in some bushes around the lodge so you can actually see nature to it best absorb um, have a look at the f different kind of flora and if you're extremely lucky maybe a fauna or any any animal right so we have different trees and and different purpose of these these bushes around like like this here this is the cocret the, the leaves is used to make the thatch roof of this these bush camps right and even this look at this here here we have capadula the tea that we drank this morning that's good for your back you know like they say if you if you think that you lose too much of children you know you build them back so we just came from this trail as you can see it goes in a big circle and right there we have the lodge and if you go this way you go straight to the savannah and then through that savannah area you get to the village Nice. And what I like about this is not too many mosquitoes. Obviously very wet. It rained for like nine hours, literally the whole night, plus a little bit of the morning. It's beautiful here. I mean, all you're hearing is nature, right? And if you want to, you guys can go bird watching. Of course, it's another thing they offer. You can do that early morning. I'm not really a bird watcher, so I'll skip that activity. But I'm sure a lot of you guys like bird watching, so you come here for that. Where are you going? The matapi, right? The matapi that the females used yesterday to extract the juice from the cassava, the grated cassava. That piece of equipment is made from this. And what this is, is the name? Mokro. The name of this plant or this mokro. It's be much more long, like, you know, yeah. long as the matapi or even longer. And we cut it. Shred it. Then we boss it. It usually happens with a knife. So we boss it in half. Then we bust it again. You notice there's a this is white inside or the flesh or the meat that we would say. So you hold it like this. Usually we put a piece of cloth, but presently right now we don't have a cloth and now this part here, this is what we use to do the knitting. Is it it's green in color? But when it's quail and get old, it turns brown. So this is actually the thing that making the you weave into the yeah you weave. This is the, actually the, the material that you weave. Yeah. And right here we made it to the savanna. So if you guys don't know the difference, savanna is just like open field grassland. Over here we have the forest, lots of trees, a lot more animals over there, right? The, this trail is leading to the village. The trail on the left, and this one here is leading into the back down. You know, we, the loggers go and okay. so forth. Years like ago, years. years ago, while hogging through here, not no. sometimes from time to time, but it takes like yeah. one in every three years to. Yeah, this oh, one wow. here is just mainly deer you would so find in this savanna foxes. and foxes. Yeah, deer and savanna fox. And um, mm -hmm. you could find the aguti or akuri, the red rabbit, the rabbit. Yeah. Oh yes, get aguti here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And this is the end of our, you know, little walk. We're gonna go back now and. Go for lunch. Yeah, so along this trail, you won't really see a lot of animals, mainly because people traverse it every yeah, single day. As well as we have motorcycles and tractors, you know, kind of noise. Mm -hmm. But they're out there just scared to come and come closer. Yeah. But I love this, guys. It is so peaceful, so relaxing. If you just stand still for a second, what do you hear? Just birds and insects. The red foot and the yellow foot tortoise are here, but to see that, you literally have to go in and start pulling out the bushes. Really impossible. That's really what I wanted to see though. Well, David, here we are, back at the lodge after the small hiking. All right, so we have about a half hour, relax. I'm gonna hang out in the hammock right now. Whew. Damn, it got hot, huh? Sun came out. Let's take off my shoes. Go to sleep, huh? All right, nap is over. Let's go make some food. I just crossed for about 30 minutes on this hammock. Oof, I feel great, I feel alive. All right, bush cook. Like that? 
And there you have the water inside. Wow, who's that for? You can drink this. Yeah? Yeah. It's amazing, look at that. Look how much there is. This is an amazing coconut. <laughs> I love this one. So in order to get a coconut to utilize it to make the cook up today, we'll have to get it in a more finer form. We have to grate it out of this shell using the sit down grater. The sit down grater. It have what we call teeth or sharp edges. I will be converting the nut into this form. Okay. And here we're using a scraping technique, starting from the outer circle mm -hmm. of the coconut while we work toward going inwards. And the next thing, while doing it, after every grate or scrape or whatever you want to say, you make a turn. Like this, and we turn the coconut, turn again, easy access. And that's it. That's it. The next thing we have to do is we have to add water. Yeah, it's like a washing process. So we're gonna wash this out, wash the milk out of it. Got it. Yeah. And then that goes in with the rice. And then we throw the milk into the rice and, and then we gotta cook up. cook up along with peas and other ingredients. Amazing. So we're gonna do the cook up rice right here, right? So we're gonna start a fire now. Okay. Just like this fire, just the sticks. Put all this thing. Put it in with the wood. This is a karahi, karahi a cooking pot, and this is where the cook up magic is gonna happen. So it's called karahi. Karahi. A kahari, karahi. Karahi. So call it different things. Okay. So it took us about 15 minutes to get this fire started, but now it's going, and we're getting ready, right? Just cooking up or heating up the pot. As soon as that's ready, throw everything in. I'm squeezing the coconut. Okay, you squeeze it. Yeah, let the cream come out more. Forget the cream. So you just added water? Yeah, add water. And that was it? Yeah. So they're making the coconut milk. Yeah. She's gonna squeeze it a number of times until it's as creamy as possible, then she's gonna strain it. And that's what we're gonna use. Oh, so what are you doing next? This is, um, Local green seasoning that we made with onion, garlic, shallota that we blend together. This is the cube, you mash it. Okay. 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 You can put a little bit of um, pepper. pepper and must in every pepper. You gotta put a little pepper and when it's just boiled, it just bursts and all that delicious flavor comes out right into the rice. This is the black pepper, you add to flavor the pot. And you just turn that up and then you're gonna put it in the black pepper. It is a cook up so you don't use and a bush book. Now you train this is the, um, the red peas. You go into the cook. You just add it in the coconut milk. Mm. That's gonna just be absorbed mm -hmm. into the rice, giving it that rich cook of flavor that we all know and love. See pepper and the onion, that it in circle. Celery. You leave it to boil and simmer. So it needs to simmer? Yeah. Okay, so Mary, so what, where are we at now in the process? I mean, we've added all the ingredients? Yes, all the ingredients are. And now it just simmers for how long? When it dry right down, simmer down. So? After dry, all the milk, all this water have to boil down. Okay. Yes. Well, guys, you can see black eyed peas, you have pieces of beef in there, the wee wee wee. And this is too hot. Okay, let's get out of here. All right, I'm so hot that I have to pour water over my head. Oh, it's ice cold from the river. Oh. Oh. All right, I'm alive now. 
my gosh, I was, I was melting. Yeah, so now we're just waiting for this to simmer down, right? It's intense. The heat with the sun, I'm just swelting right now. It smells so good, that aroma, we worry. Coconut, that's my favorite part about this. Coconut rice cook up. This is the hachibana or the wild plantain leaf and we're gonna be using it as a tablecloth today. And we'll be serving our meal on it too. I guess first time I ever see that. Pot the table, literally pot on the table. This is really amazing. We're gonna be serving the cook up onto a plant in leaf, right? That's right. Plant in. All right, here we go. Put the fried fish. Very nice. Oh no. Put some. Mm hmm. Cucumber on the side. Okay, so we're almost ready. So, what do we have there? We have some lime juice. Lime juice. But well, in Guyana, when somebody says swank, this is what they mean swank. lime juice. Yes. Good for the humidity and a good way to combat the cook up. Mm, it's nice. Almost like an iced tea. Yes. yes, I'm ready. Cook up rice. Cook up. You have your pepper there on the side. Mm -hmm. Also good to accompany it. Get some beef. So, here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And the difference with this is that having it cook over the fireside, mm -hmm. you get that nice taste. It should be different than if you cooked it on the, on the regular stove, yeah, gas a, stove. A little bit more smoky, right? Yes. And then you also have mm, the coconut. Yeah. It's amazing. The key is the coconut, putting enough coconut. So you can put, do a big pot and do limit yourself. No, you have to put a lot around, right. right? Oh man, the beef, super mm -hmm. tender too. Mm. And everybody cooks cook up in different ways. So there's some people who don't eat beef and so they will substitute with chicken. Mm -hmm. But for those who eat almost everything, you have beef, you have salted beef, you have pigtail, Got tripe. It. There's so many things. So this, this cook up, this pot can be a creation all of your own. Here on the left, we have uh, fish. Mm -hmm. So this is a fried fish. What fish is this? This is trout. This is trout? Yes. So with trout, you got the spine here, right? Yes. Take that out. In the middle. And you can go in here. Look at that. Yes. Mm -hmm. and some people like ketchup. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's amazing. Um, mm. You can add pepper. You can use achar with this. Mm -hmm. Have you tasted achar before? I love achar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Achar also is, is a good, good accompaniment to it. So I know you've been popping a lot of peppers recently. Yeah, you know I'll pop another one. <laughs> Is that, what you, do? Is that what you want me to do? Is that you want me to do? Everybody wants to know you're gonna carry down all these peppers <laughs> inside my organs. <laughs> oh wow, mm. that was another spicy one. Mm -hmm. mm. Really good. Amazing. Really good. Well, you know the locals will say after this, you've had cook up, you've had some swank. Mm -hmm. That's a recipe for you know what. Deep sleep. <laughs> Deep sleep. Deep sleep. Deep sleep. Thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> no. Mmm. Yes. Oh, the meat. Mm. Really well so done. So tender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What's amazing is that everything here is organic. Yes. From the land, right? Yes. One of the things that we really focus on in destinations is making sure that they utilize all the produce from the communities in their foods mm -hmm. as much as possible and if not found in their communities at least it's found in georgetown or somewhere close to them so still works just it's as Guyanese. well yes this is so refreshing swank mm -hmm. you said so, swank swank swank, yes. swank. Is, not swank swank and we also have an amazing dessert Cassava cheesecake. I cannot wait to try that. Mm. But let me enjoy this meal. Sure. Congratulations. Mary, where is she? Mary, love it. So good. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Oh, man. Phenomenal meal. So, this is not a Guyanese meal without some pepper, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, gotta add some pepper. A little bit. Ooh. Pepper is all about your tolerance level. How yeah. much can you take? And right now I'm coming out with my own hot sauce. So that's Ooh. gonna be my 
So it's not gonna be this hot though. Okay. I, I'm trying to try and get the masses, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the same challenge with us as Guyanese, you know. Mm -hmm. We're accustomed to having food well seasoned, mm -hmm. a lot of flavors or pepper. So mm. when we go to other countries and you know, it's a bit less seasoned. Yeah, of course. We pick up on that instantly. I mean in America a lot of things are very bland. So for me it's like always mm -hmm. having at least either black pepper mm -hmm. or having some other spice. Some okay. other peppers. Yeah. I think it's too much. It's amazing food. I guess because they were serving in a leaf, it, your your portion size, you know, they couldn't really determine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a big portion yeah. size. The size is massive. Ooh, here's a fun fact about cook up. Cook up is actually a traditional dish also that's served on all year's night or the eve of the last day of the year. And everybody's home has a pot of cook up in it. Traditionally, we use pigeon peas black eye red bean whatever kind of cook up you like but it's definitely a tradition on all years this is cassava cheesecake this is it made with milk with the cassava bread i chip it up in the milk i put my um, nutmeg i put my essence i put two eggs and then i grate cheese over it and i put it in the oven to bake this cassava cheesecake local Cassava cheesecake. I'm excited. Cassava cheesecake? Well, I can tell you this is my first time having this. I'm Me too. Very curious. See what's, what's happening here. Let's do it. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. 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 Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a pudding, like a, like a bread and butter pudding mm -hmm. consistency. Feels and like you're tasting the, the essence. Mm -hmm. Feels like custard. Yeah, anyway. it's custard. Mm -hmm. And then we have some, I think there's a cherry mm -hmm. inside as well. Yeah, like there's a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Right. Oh, oh, good. Mm. No more. Mm. My belly is. Between the cook up, the swank, and this. Oh man. I know. We've, we've had a culinary feast for lunch. I think we can move after this. Yeah, we have to get going. <laughs> uh, so we are a little behind. So we're now going to get onto the boat and then go straight out about two hours. Yes. I'm excited. Hopefully we see some monkeys. Yeah, our, and our national bird, the Watson. So we'll keep our eyes peeled. Let's we'll see what adventures the river has for us. Perfect. All right, let's go. Great. <laughs> you made me a necklace. Come again. Come back to Morocco by again. That's what it does, huh? I like it. Look good? So what is this? This is a headdress. A headdress? Look like a full nomad. It's amazing. Well that was extremely kind of them. Look at this. Got a headpiece, got the necklace. He said this ensures that I come back. Hopefully one day. One day. All right, let's get on the boat and let's go. We still have a two hour journey straight up to the car, right? So hopefully we see some birds and some monkeys. Wow, oh, this man will get so much straight now. You good? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. See you guys later. We're going to rest now. From the resort to the village takes around 15 minutes on this small boat through this very shallow creek. Lots of trees. We have to go really, really slow because it does go in like like left, right. I mean, lots of different oak and then lots of trees like this. Hits you, all right? Uh, very small boat, small engine. So it takes a little bit of time. It's very peaceful here, very relaxing. Unfortunately, no animals because the boats go up and down here. The animals scatter into other creeks, right? So the black water. Look how dark this water is. Black water. I know it's clear there, but gotta be careful. Anaconda, huh? Huh? Anaconda? Uh huh. And black diamonds. Woo! It's starting to rain. It's the hardest part about being in the rainforest. It rains a lot. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Yeah, we're about to switch boats right now. Captain! How are you doing? Good. Thank you. All right, here we go. Two hours. Let's go. We made it. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Captain. Yes. Thank you so much. Woo! That's it. Yeah. Oh man, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.
That's Marakabai. What an experience. Today was what? Bacon, salt fish. Bacon, salt fish. We had uh, oh cook so up. I know we ate too much food today, <laughs> but that was the experience. We spent over 36 hours here. What an incredible spot. If you're ever in Guyana, definitely come out here. It takes around four hours to get here from Georgetown. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Just give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. We'll see you in the next one somewhere in Guyana. Let's go.